YouTube, what is good? So I got all these prints laid out today because we're answering one of the most common questions I get from photographers and it's why can I not sell prints? It's a pretty simple question and honestly there's a very simple answer as well and I'm gonna give it to you today. So real quick, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button and the sponsor on today's video is Squarespace. Head over to squarespace.com slash evanranth. At any point in the video, you can start a free trial and make your own print website and use code evanranth to get 10% off your first purchase. We'll talk about them a little bit more later on in the video. But real quick, I got a question for y'all. What is the difference between this print right here, this dope little Atlanta helicopter photo and let's say this print right here, the fuzzy duck. Got your answer? I'll give you like five seconds. Five, four. Key difference between these two prints is something that I call their placement value. You see, this photo of Atlanta has a higher placement value than this fuzzy duck photo. Now, what do I mean by placement? Placement is a term that I kind of stole from the music industry. Let's say you produce a record, you make some beat and a rapper raps on it, it ends up on their album. You can refer to that as a placement. This same concept can apply to a photo print ending up in someone's home. So think of it this way. This fuzzy duck photo, while cool, and honestly, I think it's more of an artistic expression of myself. You know, a photo like this is harder to come by. We got this crazy sky, neon lights, red truck, a lot of different layers and elements to it. The reality is the likelihood of this ending up in someone's house because they want it in their home is pretty low. It has low placement value. There's not a lot of potential for someone to buy this and say, I'm gonna hang this fuzzy duck up in my living room. Whereas this photo of the Atlanta skyline with this helicopter is actually a pretty easy photo to make. But this image has a higher placement value because there are so many people out there in the city of Atlanta who may see this and say, you know, I do wanna put that in my office. There's a high probability that someone who sees this will buy it because they can relate to it as opposed to the fuzzy duck photo. So let's do another example real quick. We have this photo I made outside my parents' house. We got some cool reflections, a cool red sky. We got the moon in there. This is something I'll probably end up putting in a book at some point. And then we have this classic car photo right here. Love the blue. Which one of these photos is the higher placement value photo? Three, two, one, should be pretty obvious. It is this photo of the car. Why? There there are so many people out there in the world who might buy this for their office. They might love classic cars. They might just like the way it looks, like the nostalgia feeling of it. It is something that has a high likelihood of being purchased, whereas this photo right here, as cool as it looks and as artistic of an expression it is for me, someone is not likely to buy this. It has low placement value. So if you're getting the point of what I'm saying, it's not about the art that you're creating when it comes to selling prints and making money. I know that's tough to hear. I know you just want to make photos to make them and you expect people to buy them. That's not the case. Once again, to relate it back to music, think of it like this. You might have your favorite album and the song that gets played on the radio that everyone likes might not be the most artistic expression of that particular musician. That's just the way the game works. The hit single is the one that a lot of people pay attention to, and then the art is for the true fans. And that is the way you can look at your photography work as well. Now, something extremely important I wanna get across in today's video is all you have to do is understand this concept of low value versus high value. You don't have to apply it to everything you do. Say you make a photo like this fuzzy duck image that you like, that you know is not necessarily gonna sell the best, you can still put it on your website and it might appeal to a niche audience and who knows, maybe the right people will eventually find it. The important part is that you understand that going into it and for every photo like this, if you wanna make sales, you consider putting out the photo that's a little bit more high high value that appeals to a bigger audience. Kind of balance yourself out. That's exactly what happened on my site, evanramp.com. I didn't sell a lot of these, I sold a lot of these, and that's okay. And speaking of evanramp.com, like I said, Squarespace is the sponsor on today's video. Evanramp.com is where I sell my prints. So when I first started selling photography prints, I made the decision to run it by myself and not use a service or a drop shipping website. And the reason I did that is so I can control one, the quality of the products going out from my site. I wanna make sure every print looks good. I wanna make sure there's no issues with them. People are spending their hard earned money to put these items in their home. And that's very important to me. And also I like 
to sign my prints and also do numbered additions. Over the years, I've just seen that works a lot better. You can charge higher prices because it's actually a personal thing. Someone knows that they are getting a piece of work that came from a real artist, they had to touch it, they had to sign it, they had to look at it, and they had to send it out. So you are in luck. If you wanna build your own print site, I have a video about it on this channel. I'll link it down in the description below. It goes step by step how you can build a print website so you can start making sales for yourself. Now, one other great thing about using Squarespace to build your site as opposed to using a drop shipping site for prints is the fact that you get to keep all the money. All the money comes back into your business. You're not paying this upcharge and this service fee to a company to basically manage this for you. You can go to squarespace.com slash Evan Ramp to start a free trial, build a test site. You can watch that tutorial I linked down below. And then when it's time to sign up, you can use code Evan Ramp to get 10% off that first purchase. Now, everything we've talked about today is the reason why identity is so important as an artist and as a creative. Now, I'm gonna be the first to admit my brand identity is a little bit all over the place lately as I'm kind of recalibrating how I'm doing YouTube and Instagram and all that stuff. But if your sole focus is just on photography, it's important for people to know what type of photography you do. Why are they following you? Why are they paying attention to you? Do you create nostalgic film photos? Do you create car photos? Do you create wedding photos, landscape photos? Do you go out in the desert and only post desert abstract photos? textures. What is it that you do? Why is someone following you online? Why are they paying attention to you? And if you can identify why that is, you are more likely to be able to identify what type of prints that particular person and that particular audience is going to buy. It's going to be so much easier for you to understand what's high value and what is low value. So let's say, for example, you live in a small town. People in your small town know you as a photographer. Prints that identify things in that small town that resonate with that audience audience you have are probably going to sell better than a print that's created of, I don't know, say a snow leopard or something random. You're more likely to make sales when you print something that resonates with the audience that you already have. Even if that audience is only 20 people, you might sell three prints. But once again, the snow leopard print, I don't think is going to sell with those 20 people. I could be wrong. There could be an exception, but that's just the way I see it. You know, think of it like this. If you are a nature photographer in the Southeast and all you do is make landscapes, that's all you you post online, you do local galleries, you meet other photographers, you are known as the Southeast landscape photographer. Which print is going to sell better? I don't know. Let's say this print from the desert out in California. Is your audience going to buy this? The people who follow you for Southeast nature photography? Or is this print of Smoky Mountain National Park going to sell better? If you can answer that question, you understood the point of today's video. So anytime I do a video about prints, I get the question, where can I get prints done like yours? I always recommend going local if you have the option because supporting local small business is something I always encourage. And two, the logistics of going locally is just easier. If something goes wrong, you don't have to send things in the mail. You don't have to get stuff overnighted. You can go check the progress. It's easier to build a relationship. But if you don't have that option, an out-of-state printing lab for me that I recommend is American Color Imaging, acilab.com. They offer a bunch of different photo printing products. You can get canvases. You can just get a bunch of stuff. And they also do press products as well. So if you have a photo business, they are definitely a resource you might want to take advantage of or at least look into. You do have to create an account. You have to download ordering software. It's not some simple plug and play thing, but they're a very legit lab and they're really helpful if this is something you want to do. So acilab.com, American Color Imaging. Check them out. See you guys next time.